going to look at ionic compounds that have some of the polyatomic ions. And these are on your blue sheet, but we've got sulfate, nitrate, phosphate, carbonate, chlorate, and then we could have sulfite and so forth. So in this case, there is a group of atoms, and these are called polyatomic ions, because poly just means there's more than one atom there. So more than one atom, and the entire group has a charge. The rules are no different. The charges still cancel to zero, and we could have a simple metal whose charge is always the same, or we could have a transition metal whose charge varies. So I'm going to do an example with chlorate. Chlorate just happens to have this formula. We did a dot structure for this. This ended up being trigonal planar with the or trigonal pyramidal like that. We added that extra electron to the available. So this entire group has a negative one charge. So it behaves like anything else with a negative one charge. So just to remind us, if it's a Cl, it's going to end in chloride, or fluoride, sulfide, oxide, nitride. But if we have a group, it's going to end in an 8. So I often refer to the polyatomics as 8s. The chlorite ends up having one less oxygen. We don't really need to know that. So if we go over here and look at sodium which will have a plus one, with chlorate, oops, I'll put the three there, chlorate has a minus one. This entire thing acts as one group, so the charges cancel to zero as long as we have a one-to-one -one ratio. And the name of this, because sodium always has one charge, we don't have to put a Roman number with it. This is just sodium and the ClO Oops, I keep forgetting the 3. The ClO3 is chlor 8. The formula is just the same as a 1 to 1 ratio with sodium chloride. Okay. okay, now let's put magnesium together with chlorate. So magnesium is always a plus 2. We see magnesium in the plus 2 column. And chlorate, that whole compound, is always a minus 1. So it's going to take two of these chlorates. And that's why we need the parentheses. We'll put the entire formula in parentheses and then put a 2 outside of the parentheses. So what we get our formula from the charges canceling to 0. That would be as though there were two of these groups. Minus 1 and minus 1 gives us a negative 2, and a negative 2 cancels a positive 2 on magnesium. But we show that we have two groups by putting the 2 here. The name of this is magnesium, oops, I forgot the end, chlorate. The name looks very similar to magnesium chloride. So we want to be extra careful when we're naming so that we keep all these rules uh, straight. One magnesium requires two chlorine atoms because each of those has a minus one charge. So we still have a two to one ratio, magnesium chloride. Let's put aluminum together with chlorate. Aluminum is a plus three and chlorate is a minus one, and we can look on the blue sheet to see the charge. Remember, a minus sign all by itself is a minus one. So we need three of these minus one charges because the charges have to cancel to zero. So we would have one aluminum and three of these chlorate ions. So the name of this one is aluminum chlorate. Okay. We 
could also have, for example, an iron plus 2 with a chlorate. That entire thing has a minus 1 charge. So an iron 2 is going to act just like magnesium because they have the same charge. So this is going to have one iron and two of these things called chlorate. The name of this one can't just be iron chlorate. This needs the Roman number two. So our metal may need a Roman number. If we don't know its charge, then that means we figure out what the charge is and the charge is the Roman number. If the metal always has the same charge, there's no reason to put the charge after it. Okay. So we could have iron 3 with chlorate. So iron plus 3 is common. So ClO3 minus 1. That would require three of these things called chlorate. And this would be iron Roman number 3. So we can have a simple metal with a polyatomic ion or a transition metal with a polyatomic ion. Just like we can have a simple metal with just a symbol on the periodic table or we can have a transition metal with just a symbol on the periodic table. So we basically have four possible scenarios there, and I'm going to summarize those on the next slide. We can have a metal or a transition metal. So the metal is one charge only. The transition metal is a variable charge. And then we can have a non-metal. That is a symbol on the periodic table fluoride, chloride, oxide, nitride, or we can have a polyatomic ion. So two types of metals, two types of nonmetals. The polyatomic ions are listed on your blue sheet, and they're groups of metals. They're actually, I mean, I'm sorry, they're groups of nonmetals. Okay. The rules don't change. The charges still cancel to zero. And the name, we name the metal, and then we name the nonmetal. The metal may need a Roman number, and the nonmetal may be an eight instead of an eyed. So lots of little details to keep track of.